Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 8 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture, I discussed with you the concept of central tendency. In particular, we discussed the arithmetic mean, the weighted mean, the median in the case of raw data and in the case of the frequency distribution of a discrete variable. Today, I will continue with the concept of the median and I will discuss with you its computation in case of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable. Later, we will go on to some other measures of central tendency. In case of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable, the formula for the median is L plus H over F into N over 2 minus C. Is formula may L, H, F, N or C, ye sub jo terms hain, inke definite meanings hain, jo mein aapko abhi thodi der mein explain karungi. The first thing you have to note is that the first step is to compute the value N over 2, that is the total number of observations divided by 2. Next, we will construct the column of cumulative frequencies and locate this number n over 2 in the column of cumulative frequencies. Aye, main ye tamam discussion usi example ke hawale se karti hu, jo hum shuru se karte chale aa rahe hain, that is the example of the EPA mileage ratings. As you now see on the screen, the column of cumulative frequencies for that example is 2, 6, 20, 28 and 30 and dividing 30 by 2 we obtain the number 15 and if we want to locate this number in this column of cumulative frequencies it is obvious that the 15th value lies in the third class whose cumulative frequency is 20 and does not lie in the second class whose cumulative frequency is only 6. Is ka matlab ye hai ke median class jo hai that is the third class 36.0 to 38.9. Hame median central value chahiye. 30 cars ko aap unki mileage ke hisab se agar ascending order mein arrange kar dein to aapko 15 value ya yun keh lijiye ke 15 aur 16 value ke darmiyan jo exact center mein number aata hai that number is required to iske liye hum 30 ko 2 se jab humne divide kiya to hame wo number 15 wo number mila जो जिसकी जिसके अगेंस्ट माइलेज हमें चाहिए उसे हमने क्यूमुलेटिव फ्रीक्वेंसीज के कॉलम में लोकेट किया कि ये 15वीं कार जो है वो किस माइलेज ग्रुप में लाए करती है एंड वी फाउंड दैट इट इज द थर्ड ग्रुप एंड देयरफॉर द मीडियन लाइज इन दिस थर्ड ग्रुप नाउ दैट वी हैव लोकेटेड द मीडियन क्लास Students, let us go back to the formula that I related a few minutes ago. X tilde equals to L plus H over F into N over 2 minus C. In this formula, L is the lower boundary of the median class. H is the class interval of the median class. F is the frequency of the median class. N by 2 is 15 as explained earlier 
and C represents the cumulative frequency of the class immediately preceding the median class. So, locating all these numbers in this example of EPA mileage ratings, we find that L is 35.95, H is 3, F is 14, and C is 6, and substituting all these numbers in the formula, X tilde, that is the median, comes out to be 37.88 miles per gallon. Is ka mafhoom ye hua ke wo jo median mileage hume chahiye thi, wo darmyan wali mileage, that is 37.88 miles per gallon. And we can say that 15 cars have mileage less than or up to this value and 15 cars have mileage more than this value. All right, let us now apply this concept to the example of the managers of the child care centers that we discussed in the last lecture. You will recall that the statement of the example was the following table contains the ages of 50 managers of child care centers in five cities of a developed country. The ages are 42, 26, 32 and so on. Having converted this data into a frequency distribution, we would like to find the median age. All right, students, you will recall that following the various steps involved in the construction of a frequency distribution, we obtained class intervals 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, and so on. And the frequencies were 6, 18, 11, 11, 3, and 1. Now, the median is given by x tilde is equal to L plus H over F multiplied by N by 2 minus C, where L is the lower class boundary of the median class, H is the class interval of the median class, F is the frequency of the median class, and N is the total number of observations. C stands for the cumulative frequency of the class preceding the median class. So, first of all, we construct the column of class boundaries as well as the column of cumulative frequencies. As you now see on the screen, the class boundaries are 19.5 to 29.5 as the boundaries of the first class, 29.5 to 39.5, 39.5 to 49.5 and so on. And if we look at the fourth and last column of the table, we find that the cumulative frequencies are the first value 6, exactly the same as the frequency of the first class. And then 6 plus 18 gives us 24. 24 plus 11 gives us 35 and so on. Now, first of all, we have to determine the median class. That is, that class for which the cumulative frequency is just in excess of n by 2. In this example, n is equal to 50, implying that n by 2 is equal to 25. And therefore, as we can see in the table, the third class of our frequency distribution is the median class. 
having determined the median class we see that L is equal to 39.5, H is equal to 10, F is equal to 11 and C is equal to 24. Substituting these values in the formula we obtain X tilde is equal to 40.4. Thus we conclude that the median age is 40.4 years. In other words, 50% of the managers are younger than this age and 50% are older. As con I conveyed to you in the last lecture, the median students is that average which is much preferable to the arithmetic mean in that situation when our data set contains a few very high or very low values. Of course, this is not the case in this example that we just discussed, but generally this point should be kept in mind. The median is also very, uh, it's a useful measure in that particular situation where our frequency distribution is an open-ended frequency distribution. Open-ended distribution se meri kya murad hai? Let me explain this to you with the help of an example. Suppose that the wages of the workers in a factory are, as you now see on the screen, 100 workers have monthly income less than rupees 2000, 300 workers have income between 2000 and 2000. 999 rupees, 500 have uh, income between rupees 3000 and 3999 and so on. And if you notice for the last class, we, we have the, uh, the information that 50 workers have income which is uh, rupees 5000 and above. Is example may Shuru ki class or last class, both of these are what are called open-ended classes. Is ki wajah kya hai? Ke pehli class ki lower limit hume available nahi hai or last class ki upper limit hume available nahi hai. When we say that they have uh, income rupees 5000 or higher, now we do not know what exactly do we mean by higher? Is it up to rupees 6,000, 7,000, 10,000? That is unknown. And similarly for the first class, if we say it is less than 2,000, we do not know where we are starting from. Students, is tra ki distribution ke case me, agar aapko arithmetic mean compute karni ho, so, you have to do a problem. This is why you have to do this. You have to do this. Arithmetic mean ka formula is x bar is equal to sigma fx over sigma f. And x jo hai, that represents the midpoints of the various classes. When you have to do the lower limit, you have to do this. So, midpoint compute karna possible nahi hai sirf aap andaza laga sakte hain ke the lower limit might be this much and accordingly the midpoint of that class might be a certain value similarly for the last class because you do not know what is the upper limit you will only at best estimate it and hence you will have an estimated value for the midpoint of the last class as well. Iske baraks median ke liye koi masla nahi hai. Jaisa mene kaha, the median is given by L plus H over F into N by 2 minus C 
اور یہ تمام چیزیں ایل ایچ وغیرہ دے پرٹین ٹو دا میڈین کلاس وچ وڈ جنرلی جنرلی لائی سم ویئر ان دا مڈل آف یور فریکوینسی ڈسٹریبیوشن اس میں وہ شروع والی اوپن اینڈیڈ کلاس یا وہ لاسٹ والی اوپن اینڈیڈ کلاس انوالو ہی نہیں ہو رہی اینڈ ہینس دیر از نو پرابلم ان کمپیوٹنگ دا میڈین اوکے ناؤ دیٹ وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ the arithmetic mean, the median and the mode which we did in the last lecture or the one before. Students, the next concept that I am going to discuss with you is the empirical relation between the mean, median and the mode. Empirical, ye jo loves hai, empirical, is ka matlab hai, something that is based on observation. اس کا مطلب یہ ہے کہ یہ ریلیشن جو میں اب آپ کے ساتھ ڈسکس کرنے والی ہوں اٹ ڈز ناٹ ہیو اینی ریجڈ میتھمیٹیکل فارمولا رادر اٹ از سم تھنگ دیٹ ہیز بین آبزرڈ وین ڈیلنگ ود ریئل ڈیٹا سیٹس اسٹوڈنٹس دس کانسیپٹ relates to the relative positions of the median, mean and the mode on the x-axis of our frequency distribution. Aapko yaad hoga, maine aapke saath absolutely symmetrical distribution, moderately skewed distribution, positively skewed, negatively skewed, یہ تمام کانسیپٹ ڈسکس کیے تھے سب سے پہلے جو ایبسلوٹلی سیمیٹریکل ڈسٹریبیوشن ہے اس کی بات کرتے ہیں اسٹوڈنٹس اس ڈسٹریبیوشن میں دا میڈین دا موڈ اینڈ دا مین دے آل لائی ایٹ ایگزیکٹلی دا مڈل آف یور ڈسٹریبیوشن ان ادر ورڈس دے کو انسائڈ at the point which is at the exact center of your distribution. Ye jo point maine aapke saath discuss kiya, ye ab screen par aapke saamne hai, aur jaisa ke aap dekh rahe hain, the mean, median and the mode all lie at the same point and that point which is at the exact center of the distribution. But students, in case of a skewed distribution, these three values do not lie at the same point. Rather, they are pulled apart. And they are pulled apart in a certain way, which I am now going to explain to you. As you now see on the screen, in case of a positively skewed distribution, And a very important point to note is that the distance between the median and the mode is approximately double of the distance between the median and the mean. Is baat ko hum algebraically is tarah se express kar sakte hain ke the median minus mode is approximately two times the mean minus the median. Isi baat ko hum is tarah bhi express kar sakte hain ke mean minus mode is approximately equal to three times the mean minus the median. Now, if we solve equation one or if we solve equation two, students, in both situations, we obtain the approximate relationship that you now see on the screen. The empirical relation between the mean, median and the mode comes out to be mode is approximately equal to three times the median minus two times the mean. Students, ye tamam discussion maine abhi aapke saath jo ki hai, I did it with reference to the moderately positively skewed distribution. 
लेकिन ये तमाम तर डिस्कशन इट इज वैलिड इन द केस ऑफ अ नेगेटिवली स्क्यूड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एज वेल फर्क सिर्फ ये होगा कि जो पैटर्न आपने अभी पॉजिटिवली स्क्यूड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के लिए देखा यानी द मीन वॉज बिगर दैन द मीडियन एंड द मीडियन वॉज बिगर दैन द मोड अब उसके ऑपोजिट सिचुएशन होगी द मीन विल बी लेस दैन द मीडियन एंड द मीडियन विल बी लेस दैन द मोड आई वुड लाइक यू टू टेक इट अप एज एन एक्सरसाइज कि आप नेगेटिवली स्क्यूर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के लिए इसको खुद इसको स्टडी करें और देखें कि एग्जैक्टली वही इम्पेरिकल रिलेशन आपको मिलेगी जो कि पॉजिटिवली स्क्यूर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के केस में मैंने अभी आपके साथ डिस्कस की है अ वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट टू नोट इज दैट दिस रिलेशन does not hold in case of an extremely positively or negatively skewed distribution in other words the j shaped or the reverse j shaped distribution it does hold in case of the moderately skewed distribution or jaisa ki main aapko pehle kai dafa bata chuki hu moderately skewed distribution hi wo distribution hai jo aap most frequently encounter karte hain Uh, with real life data sets let us try to verify this relation for the data of the epa mileage ratings that we have been considering for the past few lectures students you will recall that the frequency distribution for that example was the class limits were 30.0 32.9 to 35.9 and so on the frequencies were 2 4 14 8 and 2 also the histogram of the frequency distribution was as you now see on the screen and the frequency polygon and the frequency curve were as you now see now students it is clear from all these diagrams that this particular frequency distribution is only slightly skewed as i mentioned earlier the empirical relation between the mean median and the mode holds for moderately skewed distributions and not for extremely skewed ones hence in this particular example since the distribution is only very slightly skewed therefore we can expect the empirical relation to hold reasonably well all right students you will recall that in this particular example the arithmetic mean was 37.85 the median was 37.88 and the mode came out to be 37.825 now the close proximity of these three measures of central tendency provide a strong indication of the fact that this particular frequency distribution is indeed very slightly skewed now the empirical relation between the mean median and the mode is given by mode is approximately equal to 3 times the median minus 2 times the mean substituting the values of the median and the mean in the right hand side of this relation we obtain 3 times 37.88 minus 2 times 37.85 equal to 37.94 now students the mode is equal to 37.825 and we notice that it is indeed very close 
to 37.94, the value that we just obtained for the right hand side of this relation. Hence, the empirical relation is verified. Okay, let me now extend this concept of partitioning that we have done in the case of the median that we partitioned our distribution into two equal parts. Let me extend this now to the partitioning of the distribution into four parts, 10 equal parts or 100 equal parts. In other words, I will now be talking with you about quartiles, deciles and percentiles. Jaisa ke inke naam se zahir hai, quartiles wo values hain jo data set ko char barabar hisso mein taqseem karti hain. They are denoted by Q1, Q2 and Q3. You will agree with me that if you want to divide a data set into four parts, you will require three quantities. Similar to what we had in case of the median, that we wanted to divide the data set into two equal parts and we needed just one quantity for that purpose and that was the median. Let me now uh, give to you the formulae of the three quartiles. As you now see on the screen, the first quartile is given by L plus H over F into N by 4 minus C. The second quartile is given by L plus H over F 2N over 4 minus C. And the third quartile as L plus H over F into 3N by 4 minus C. Students, ye tino formulae jo maine aapke samne pesh kiye hain, I would like you to note three things in their regard. The first point is that these formulas are valid in the case of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable. The second thing is that I hope that you have been able to detect a certain pattern in the three formulae that I have presented to you. Jo Q1 ka formula hai, usme you have n over 4. Jo Q2 ka formula hai, usme it is 2n over 4. Or Q3 ke formula mein, it is 3n over 4. Iski kya vaja hai? Iski vaja ye hai ke first quartile wo value hai, jis se pehle you have 25 percent that is one fourth of the observations. Second quartile wo value hai, jis se pehle you have 50 percent that is n by 2 that is 2 n by 4 of the n observations or third quartile wo value hai jis se pehle you have 75 percent yani three fourth of the observations. And the third and last point that you must have noted is that the formula of the second quartile is exactly equivalent to the formula of the median. Or wo to sahir hai ke hona hi chahiye. After all, median kya cheez hai? Wo bhi to wo hi value thi na? Jis se pehle you have 50% of the observations. The relative positions of the three quartiles are as you now see on the screen. The first quartile has 25% of the values to its left and 75% to its right. The second quartile, that is the median, has 50% to its left and 50% to its right. And the third quartile, Q3, has 75% to its left and 25% to its right. Ye to hue quartiles. Deciles or percentiles jo hain, 
उनकी भी बिल्कुल इसी तरह की लॉजिक है द डिसाइल्स आर दोज नाइन क्वान्टिटीज दैट डिवाइड आवर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इन टू टेन इक्वल पार्ट्स एंड द परसेंटाइल्स आर दोज नाइन्टी नाइन क्वान्टिटीज दैट डिवाइड आवर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इन टू वन हंड्रेड इक्वल पार्ट्स अब डिसाइल्स के लिए फॉर्मूले की शक्ल क्या होगी इन केस ऑफ द फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ अ कंटिन्यूस वेरिएबल बिल्कुल उसी तरह जिस तरह मैंने अभी आपको क्वाटाइल्स के लिए बताया द फार्मूला फॉर द फर्स्ट डिसाइल विल बी डी वन इज इक्वल टू एल प्लस एच ओवर एफ इन टू एन बाई टेन माइनस सी द सेकेंड डिसाइल विल बी एल प्लस एच ओवर एफ इन टू टू एन बाई टेन माइनस सी द थर्ड डिसाइल इज एल प्लस एच ओवर एफ थ्री एन बाई टेन माइनस सी एंड सो ऑन आई होप दैट यू विल बी एबल टू जज इजिली दैट द फिफ्थ डिसाइल इज एग्जैक्टली द सेम थिंग एज द मीडियन because 5n over 10 is exactly the same as n over 2 and exactly the same situation for the percentiles the formula for the first percentile will be l plus h over f n by 100 minus c the second percentile l plus h over f 2n over 100 minus c and so on or is situation mein the 50th percentile is exactly the same thing as the median the 25th percentile is exactly the same thing as the first quartile and the 75th percentile is none other than the third quartile i hope that you will be able to establish all these points very clearly in your mind aur agar aap thodi si working kare to aap dekhenge ki isme kisi qisam ki koi difficulty aapko pesh nahi aayegi students i would like you to note the difference between the word quartile and the word quantile also these quantities are called fractiles because they divide our distribution into various parts or fractions now students let me illustrate the computation of the quantiles with the help of the example of the ages of the managers of the child care centers you will recall that the frequency distribution for this example was 20 to 29 30 to 39 40 to 49 and so on and the frequencies were 6 18 11 and so on suppose that we wish to determine the first quartile the sixth decile and the 17th percentile we begin with the first quartile which is also known as the lower quartile it is given by q1 is equal to l plus h over f into n by 4 minus c first of all we find n by 4 and in this example it is equal to 12.5 now the cumulative frequency of the first class is 6 whereas the cumulative frequency of the second class is 24 since 12.5 lies between 6 and 24 hence it is obvious that the first quartile lies in the second class hence l is equal to 29.5 h is equal to 10 f is equal to 18 and c is equal to 6 therefore the first quartile is 
plus 10 over 18 multiplied by 12.5 minus 6 and that is equal to 33.1. So, the interpretation is that one fourth of the managers are younger than age 33.1 years and three fourth are older than this age. All right, students, next we compute the sixth decile, which is given by L plus H over F 6 N over 10 minus C. So, first of all, we compute 6 N over 10 and that comes out to be 6 into 50 over 10 and that is 30. Now, the cumulative frequency of the second class is 24, whereas the cumulative frequency of the third class is 35. Our number 30 lies between 24 and 35 and hence it should be obvious that the sixth decile lies in the third class of our frequency distribution. Hence, L is equal to 39.5, the class interval H is equal to 10, the frequency of that particular class is 11 and C, the cumulative frequency of the class preceding that particular class is 24. Substituting all these values in the formula, the sixth decile comes out to be 44. 0.95. This means that 6 tenth or in other words 60 percent of the managers are younger than age 44.95 years and 4 tenth are older. Last but not the least we compute the 17th percentile which is given by the formula L plus H over F. 17 n over 100 minus c. So, computing 17 n over 100, we obtain 8.5. Now, since the cumulative frequency of the first class is 6 and the cumulative frequency of the second class is 24, therefore, it is clear that this particular value the 17th percentile lies in the second class of our frequency distribution. Hence, L is equal to 29.5, age is 10, F is 18 and C is equal to 6. And substituting these values in the formula, the 17th percentile comes out to be 30.9. Similar to previous interpretations. The interpretation of this result is that 17 percent of the managers are younger than age 30.9 years and 83 percent are older than this particular age. Students, partitioning ke is concept ki significance kya hai? Yani, why is it that we are wanting to divide our distribution into all these different parts? The answer to this question is that in many situations, we are interested in the relative quantitative location of our measurement. Quantiles provide us with an easy way of achieving this. Let me explain this to you with the help of an example. If oil company A reports that its yearly sales are at the 90th percentile of all the companies in that particular industry, the implication is that 90 percent of all the oil companies have yearly sales less than company A's and only 10% have sales 
exceeding that of company A. Isi baat ki graphical interpretation is tarah se hogi ke company A ki sale x axis par jis point pe lai karti hai uske left side par the area under the curve is 90 percent of the total area and the area to the right is 10 percent. Isi concept ko ek aur interesting example ke zariye samajhne ki koshish karte hain. Suppose that you sit for a particular exam and you want to know what, where, where you stand with reference to the rest of the class. Agar aapke marks 90th percentile se zyada hain, to iska matlab ye hai ke you are among the top 10% of your class and that's great. The next concept that I would like to discuss with you is the graphic location of the quantiles. Let me explain this point with reference to the same example that we are very fond of, that of the EPA mileage ratings of cars. As you will recall, the statement of that example was Suppose that the Environmental Protection Agency of a developed country performs extensive tests on all new car models in order to determine their mileage rating. Suppose that the following 30 measurements are obtained by conducting such tests on a particular new car model, 36.3 30.1, 40.5 and so on. Also, you will recall that when we converted this raw data into a frequency distribution, we obtained classes as 30.0 to 32.9, 33.0 to 35.9 and so on. And the frequencies were 2, 4, 14, 8 and 2. Iske ilawa, humne iski graphical representation discuss ki thi. We drew the histogram, the frequency polygon, the frequency curve. And also, if you recall, we constructed the cumulative frequency polygon, that is the OGIV, as you now see on the screen. Students, Ye jo cumulative frequency polygon hai, this will enable us to graphically locate the median, the quartiles, the deciles or any percentile that we may be interested in. And this is called graphic location of quantiles. Aye, sabse pehle median ko is cumulative frequency polygon ke upar locate karne ki koshish karte hai. Now, because the median is, the, is that value before which half of the data set lies, therefore, the first step in this regard is to calculate the value n over 2. In this example, because n is equal to 30, therefore, n by 2 comes out to be 15. The next step is to locate this number n by 2 on the y-axis of the cumulative frequency polygon as you now see on the screen. Next, we draw a horizontal line perpendicular to the y-axis starting from the point n by 2 which in this example is 15 and extend this line up to the cumulative frequency polygon as you now see on the screen. Lastly, we drop a vertical line from the cumulative frequency polygon down to the x axis. Now, if we read the x value where our perpendicular touches the x axis, 
students we find that this value is approximately the same as what we obtained from our formula. Aapko yaad hoga ki jab humne formula apply kiya tha x tilde is equal to L plus H over F n by 2 minus C our answer came out to be 37.9 and the answer that you obtain from the cumulative frequency polygon is approximately the same. Students, aapko andaza ho gaya hoga ke cumulative frequency polygon jo hai that is a very useful tool to locate the median very quickly. Bilkul isi tara we can locate the first quartile, the third quartile and so on. First quartile ke liye our horizontal line perpendicular to the y axis will be drawn against the value n over 4 and for the third quartile it will be drawn against the value 3 n over 4. Isi tara, I am sure that you can now judge wh what value you should compute if you want to locate for example the 67th percentile. I am sure ke aapne kaha hoga 67 n over 100 aur agar nahi kaha to mein aapko encourage karungi ke aap is pe thoda sa work kare aur is pattern ko understand karne ki koshish kare jo mein aapko pehle bhi bataya tha jis waqt mein aapko uska formula explain kar rahi thi. Chaliye graphic location of quantiles ko bhi humne discuss kar liya. Ab is silsle mein kaun si baat reh gai? Aapne note kiya ki mein ne aapko tamam formula jo aaj diye quartiles, deciles or percentiles ke they were they are the ones which are valid in the case of the frequency distribution of a continuous variable. Aapne shayad socha ho ke what about the situation when we have a discrete variable ya what about the situation when we do not have a, a frequency distribution rather we simply have raw data. Aisi situations may be it is possible for us to compute the various quantiles. Lekin uska method mukhtalif hoga aur is course mein hamare paas itni gunjaish nahi hogi ki main sari situations aapke saath in detail in lectures mein discuss karun. But I would like to encourage you students to study the textbook and other books and to explore all the different uh, variations of the formulae that I have explained to you, the variations which are valid in different situations. Also, I would like to encourage you to attempt quite a lot of questions from your exercise so that you have a lot of practice and you feel at home with this interesting idea of partitioning of a data set into various parts. So I wish you the best of luck and until next time, Allah Hafiz.